Hi all, welcome to my channel Creative Alice. I hope you are doing well, and I know that, like always, you all are waiting for a new Adobe Illustrator trick. Hence here is a new tip with which you can fade your raster images from one side, two sides, and let me be more precise. It doesn't matter whether you want to fade two opposite sides or two adjacent sides, and yes, three sides too, all you can do right with an Adobe Illustrator. Even more, let me amaze you by telling you that you can freely fade any part of any raster image in Adobe Illustrator. So, basically, in this tutorial, I will be telling you all these tricks, and you will become a master of fading images. Before we start, I just wanted to ask you to hit the subscribe button at the bottom right of the video and click on the bell icon to ensure you do not miss any of the amazing new stuff from Creative Alice. Okay, let's get started. This is the outline mode to preview outlines of the objects you have on your canvas. You can switch to the outline mode from top menu by clicking on View, Outline, or Keyboard Shortcuts Control Y in Windows and Command Y in Mac. As we see here, our image is shown in its outline version. By pressing Control Y or Command Y again, you will be switched back to CPU preview. Open the transparency panel and by clicking the image on canvas, you will see a small thumbnail appear in the transparency panel. Next to the image thumbnail, there is an empty block, which is for opacity mask. You can either double click the block to create an opacity mask, or click this button to make a mask over the selected image. When you make a mask, you'll notice that your image suddenly disappears. Of course, no worries at all, we will make it appear again. Now, we will create a rectangle using a rectangle tool over the image as a mask. To exactly view the borders of the image, we have to switch to outline mode. Select rectangle tool from the toolbar at left. Create a rectangle over the image. Switch back to preview mode, and we can see that our image appears lightly. It's because of the four color of the rectangle that we created as a mask. Proceeding further, open Gradient Panel, just next to Transparency Panel, and click on Black and White Gradient to apply on the mask rectangle. You can notice that it's lightly faded from one side. It's faded from where we have the black color in the gradient bar, and where it is white color, it's not faded. Move the sliders to change the fade areas. You can also enable Gradient Tool from the toolbar or press G and work with gradient bar on the image. You would have noticed that it's still sharp border appeared on the faded side, which means that it is still not faded completely, and we cannot blend it with any other background seamlessly. To fix this, double click the black color on gradient bar and the color panel appears. Check that it's only case shown with 100% value, which means it's not a pure black color. Click on the top right icon and move to RGB. Now you have the pure black color with all the RGB values to zero. And you should now notice that the faded area is fixed and can be merged with any other background or color seamlessly. Similarly, do the same with the white color on gradient bar. Double click on the white color for color panel. The current value is 0% for K, which is a CMYK white and not a complete white color. Turn the color to RGB for a pure white color. Move the sliders to fade in accordance with your requirement. Once you are satisfied with the fading, open transparency panel to move out of the opacity mask. Click on the image thumbnail, and you are out of the image opacity mask to work further. Now, this is the image with one side faded, and you can seamlessly merge it with any other image, or a solid or gradient colors.
You can fix your opacity mask anytime if you think that it is not going well with the background. Move the gradient sliders. Increase or decrease the fading area for a perfect fading. You can edit the opacity mask by clicking on the opacity mask block in the transparency panel and using gradient tool, you can also change the directions of the fading. Here we are done with the fade for one side of the image. Now, we will look into how to fade the two opposite sides of the image, so we can seamlessly merge other images or backgrounds to both of the sides of an image. To do this, click on the same opacity mask in the transparency panel, then move on to gradient panel, and here, there isn't much to do for this. Just move the white color on the gradient bar to center and add another black color by clicking on the gradient bar. And you made it. The image is now faded from two opposite sides. You can see that it's diagonally faded from the two corners. You can increase the faded areas, change the directions, fade vertically or horizontally too. Giving you a bonus tip here, and it's your homework to try by yourself that you can add more black and white colors on gradient bar to make a stripe's faded effects vertically or horizontally, or even in diagonals. Now you can seamlessly merge this faded image with other images or colors from both sides. You can create awesome banners, flyers, brochures, social media posts, or any graphic design using this technique, and without moving to Photoshop to fade images, you can instantly fade your images within Adobe Illustrator and have your designs a creative and professional look. So moving forward, we will now attempt to fade the third side of the image as promised. Select the image, and click on the button Crop Image in the top controls bar. You'll notice that the image borders are now shown in a way that can be cropped from any of the sides or corners. Illustrator automatically detects the area to be cropped by analyzing the image using its AI technology. But currently, we do not want to crop the image. So, just move the crop edges again to their original image size. Now, click the Apply button on the top controls bar. See? The image opacity mask in the transparency panel has been removed, but fading from both sides is still there. What it did is rasterizes the opacity mask over the image, and the new original image is now faded from two sides. So we have the option to reapply the opacity mask over the already faded image. Redoing the same process, create an opacity mask by double clicking on the opacity mask block or clicking on the make button. Switch to Outline Mode and create a rectangle over the image using Rectangle Tool. Switch back to Preview Mode and apply a black and white gradient to the mask. As we previously have two-sided gradient, the gradient applied here was the recently created gradient and, as a result, we have our image faded from four sides. We can remove a black color mark from the gradient to fade from only one side making the total of three faded sides. You can also change the direction of the fading using gradient tool. Now, we will move toward radial fading. In radial fading, we will be able to fade the image in a circular form. So, I am undoing all previous using Command, Control Z and getting the image back to its original state. You can release the opacity mask here from the release button, and that makes the image and opacity mask object separate. Here, 
we are back to the initial stage with the original image without any fading. Radial fading is very useful when placing people's faces in your graphic design projects that fade in a circle and blended with the background giving a smooth look and feel. Let's get started with it. Using the same process initially, select the image using Selection Tool. From Transparency Panel, make an Opacity Mask and click on the mask to activate it. Switch to Outline Mode to find out the image's whereabouts and create a rectangle over it. Switch back to Preview Mode and here, in the Gradient Panel, you will notice three types of the gradient. We have earlier worked with linear gradient. Just beside the linear gradient, it is radial gradient. Click on radial gradient and check your image. It's faded in a circular form. Using the gradient tool, you can adjust the slider or move the directions and increase or decrease the faded area. You can also inverse the gradient to fade from the middle of the image. Once you are satisfied with the fading, move out of the opacity mask by clicking on the image thumbnail in the transparency panel. Now, you can merge this image with any background color or even the gradient backgrounds or can put this circularly faded image to any other image background. And as you see, it very smoothly blends with the backgrounds. Try changing the background colors to see how it looks over different backgrounds and what effects it produces. Moving forward, we are now heading toward freeform fading. In freeform fading, we will be able to fade any area of the image regardless of the directions or sides. The initial process will remain the same as creating an opacity mask over the image, and as we are already done with it, select the image and click on the opacity mask block in the transparency panel. Then, just move to gradient panel and click on the third type of gradient, which is freeform gradient. See, there are four color points added to the opacity mask rectangle over the image. Double click the color and select black, and you will notice that the area surrounding the color point is faded. If you select the black color for all the points, the image will be completely hidden. If you focus on the mouse pointer, you can see that over the mask just below the mouse pointer arrow, there is a small circle including a plus sign. This means that you can add any other color point anywhere you click. Here, another color point is added and by double clicking, its color panel appears. Select the color, white. Check that the image surrounding the area of the point is now showing. You can add as many color points as you want and wherever you want. You can fade using a black color and show using a white color. You can see how fading is done using the freeform method. Plus, you can move any of the points by clicking on the color point and dragging it to a new location. While dragging the color point, notice the surroundings of the image. It is fading as we are moving. We are fading the edges and unnecessary areas of the image. We just wanted to keep the woman holding her smartphone. So, adding black color points from where we have to fade. Now, we have our image ready with freeform fading, and we can add it to any other background, and it's smoothly blended with the background to give a cleaner and nice look. From Transparency Panel, click on the image thumbnail to move out of the opacity mask, creating a rectangle over the image, then moving it back by right-clicking the object, Arrange, Send to Back. Basically, we are creating this to serve as a background for the faded image. Try adding different colors to the background to see how the image looks over it. See that light colors appear the best as the image's original background is light, so it is better blended with these and looks good. We can also add gradient colors to the background 
to see how the image appears over it. By adding the image's original colors, you can see it looks awesome. Change the gradient type from radial to linear for a more better look. We're now just finalizing our background. Of course, you can make it more better by spending more time and selecting more better colors and fading, as, currently, I am just telling you the process for how to make this done. Adding some text at the top and bottom of the faded image. We're ready with a stunning social media post or a creative banner. I hope you enjoyed the video a lot. Do not forget to share your thoughts via the comments section. And of course, you're going to like this video and subscribe to this channel. Do not miss to click or tap the bell icon to make sure that you will be the first to receive the new video from the Creative Alice channel. Also, it is worth mentioning here that we have a great website full of professional graphic design resources available for free download. That includes free vectors, logo designs, icons, PSD mockups, backgrounds, animations, and much more including tips and tutorials for Adobe Illustrator and Adobe Photoshop. So I am sure that you do not gonna miss to visiting the website creativealice.com. Till the next video comes, take care and have a great time.